Hi, welcome to our chapter five review. Uh, we're talking about probability in this video, so don't forget to pause, read, blah, blah, blah. And of course, kitties are awesome. 15 minute timer, instructions on our frappy. Don't forget to pause and read through every video or every slide before you begin working through these questions. Here's slide A, slide B, slide C, slide B. All righty. So, solutions are coming. Don't forget to practice these questions on your own. You can look up the PDF in the assignment tab. A statistics teacher has 40 students in his class, 23 are female, 17 are male. At the beginning of class on Monday, the teacher planned to spend time reviewing an assignment due that day. Unfortunately, the teacher only had 19 of the females and 11 of the males complete the assignment. The teacher plans to randomly select students to do problems from the assignment on the whiteboard. Question A, what is the probability that a randomly selected student has completed the assignment? So we're gonna jump on into probability calculations. The first thing I did was organize the information into a two-way table. So here's that two-way table. To get my probability, what we're looking for, uh, that any student selected has completed the assignment, the thing I do is I go for completed assignment and I look for that total or I add it up myself. So the total of kids who have completed the assignment over the total number of students would be the probability of completion. So 0.75 probability or 75% chance the student completed the assignment if I randomly select from my 40. Moving on to question B. If you need practice on probability two-way tables and Venn diagrams, you can go here. Question B, are the events selecting a female and selecting a student who completed the assignment independent? So here we're dealing with independence and uh, dependence. This is gonna be, we're gonna go back and forth between two major chapters in CON, and that's the probability chapter and the random variables chapter. So let's jump on in. Just a reminder about independence. You can actually calculate independence if you take the conditional probability and you set it equal to the, um, independent probability. So if I take the condition of the probability of B given A, that must be equal to the probability of B. Vice versa, if I wanna find the probability of A given B, that must be equal to the probability of A. For those independent events, uh, so two events to actually be claimed as independent. If they are not, then we, have, uh, we don't have independent events and we can describe it as such. And so let's look at that calculation. So for ours, our P of B is gonna be students who have completed the assignment and P of A is gonna be female students. So I went ahead and set this up for us. Um, I set it up now in language we understand. The P of B is the completed. So this is gonna be the probability of completed assignments given that they are female students. That's how we read that sentence. But then I have to remind myself that there's a little bit of formula behind this. The probability of, uh, sorry, conditional probability has a formula given by the probability of the union over the probability of the denominator. So if I wanna find the conditional probability of P of B given A, then I find their joint probability up top and divide by that denominator, that P of A uh, information. So let's go ahead and solve that out for ourselves. So the probability of the joint where B and A occur would be, so B and A occurring would be completed assignments and females, right? Okay, actually let's just, circle that why not so completed assignments and female and look at that we end up with our numerator value 19 so the union value where b and a are intersecting is 19 but it's still over 40 the total number of students in the class the uh, the denominator just the probability of a remember that was just our female students would just be this 23 out of the total so I end up with this fraction down here, 19 over 40 divided by 23 over 40. I do fraction mathematics and I end up with just the probability of 19 over 23. So we end up with a conditional probability, P of B given A is equal to 19 23rds. And remember, we're solving this to be equal to this. Probability of just B, the completed assignments we did in question A. And so that was 30 out of 40. Are these two statements equal? No, so they are not uh, independent. There's a train going by, he's a little loud. Sorry about that, hopefully you can't hear it too much. But uh, to answer our question, the question said, are the events selecting a female and student to complete the assignment independent? Sorry, I wanna make sure we were answering the right question. Are they independent? The answer is no, because they those two calculations don't equal each other. So here's our justification. No, 
because our uh, conditional probability of P of completed assignments given female is 19 out of 23 is not equal to the P of just the completed assignment, which was 0.7530 uh, out of 40. Little justification further or, or in infer inference further would be knowing that a student is female actually increases the probability that the assignment was complete. And we can go ahead and just look at those conditional probabilities and we'll compare. Uh, 82 or 83 percent compared to 75 percent means that the, if they were a female, they had a higher chance of completing the assignment um, according to this table. It, it's not giving you any further information than that. It's not saying... If you're a female, you have a higher chance of completing the assignment, like just because your gender is female, not necessarily, but in this classroom, if he randomly selected a student, if he randomly selected the student and the student was female, there was a higher chance the assignment was complete. So remember to read that information based off of the givens, and you can't infer further unless you're allowed to infer further. Uh, here we've got two different sets of practice. If you just want to practice independence, this is the practice for you. If you want to practice conditional probability, which is most of what I just did, then this is the practice for you. Or both. The uh, C and D talk about a brand new topic. So there's this new paragraph I'm going to read out. Suppose that the teacher randomly selects four students to do a problem on the whiteboard and only two of the students had completed the assignment. Cool. Describe how to use the table of random digits to estimate the probability that two or fewer of the four randomly selected students completed the assignment. Great. So we're going to use that table of random digits and there is a P, there's a QR code for a page if you're like, I still don't get the table of random digits. It's coming up in just a second. So just be aware of that. So all they want is a descriptor. So I'm just going to read out the answer because this is literally just set up a um, set up a, a, a assignment problem with table of random digits. That's literally all it's saying. So I've got 40 total students and I'm dealing with all those numbers, 19, 17, 23 and 11 and then we've got to deal with the selecting four and only two have completed the assignment so we're going to go ahead and assign the numbers just random numbers 0 1 to 30 has completed the assignments i could have done 0 0 to 29 that's fine as long as you remember that the number zero is a value okay so from 1 to 30 those are completed from 31 to 40 didn't complete cool that's my classroom ready to go if i go to the table of random digits, then how do I read? So I'm going to go ahead and skip number zeros and numbers 41 through 99 because those all those values are seen on the table of random digits. Remember the table of random digits has a bunch of typically two digit values or three or however many you're using because it's a table of random digits, but remember to assign that for yourself. So if I'm dealing with two digit numbers, 0, 1 to 30, 31 to 40, then I have to think of all the two digit numbers and account for it. So that's what this magic sentence is talking about right here. Skip 0, 0 and 41 through 99. They're just reminding you of the numbers that don't matter to us. Going left to right on the random table, I'm going to choose four different two digit numbers. Why am I picking four different? Because we're randomly selecting four students. So I pick four different two different digit numbers. So if I'm reading left to right, okay, here's a two digit number, here's a two digit. We're going to see this in, a, in just a second, so don't stress too much. Count the number of students among the four chosen who have completed the assignment. Count how many of the numbers are one through 30. Repeat this process many times. This is an important statement because if you're not repeating this process many times, then are you really creating in a design experiment? Just estimate the probability that two or fewer students completed the assignment. Divide the number of trials where two or fewer completed the assignment by the total number of trials. Seems like a lot of work, but really, if you think this through, they're just in a paragraph, they're setting up how you would have walked this through. So let's walk it through because guess what question D wants us to do? Complete three repetitions of the simulation. Going back really quickly, if you're still struggling with random table, because I know that's hard. Here's a visualization and a little uh, web page about how to use the table of random digits. And of course, you can Google it for yourself, or you can just see this video slide where I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. So completing three repetitions, and that's the number of trials that they want us to do, we're gonna do using this part of the table of random digits. So if you notice our, something funky would happen, okay. Two digit numbers that represent students are underlined. So that means I started on the left and I went, okay, that's a two digit number we can use, the number 12. Why did I say the number 97 doesn't work? Well, because we are ignoring the number zero, 
and then 41 through 99. So I can't even use this number. That's what they're telling us. If it's annotated with a Y, that means they were the numbers 0, 1 through 30. That meant completed, right? If it's annotated with a no, that means they're number 31 through 40. They didn't complete. If it's number 00 or 41 through 99, they're going to have an, uh, a cross out. I'm going to make it even easier, and I'm going to cross them out with my red. Now, this might be a slightly longer video because I really am trying to show you that table D um, value. And I want you to notice, as I went along, there's something I should have noticed. There's The table of random digits is set up in five segments. And the reason they do this is to make it easy for you to see. It has nothing to do with those five numbers belong to each other. No. Can you say it has everything to do with just making it visually pleasing for you. So as I go through the number one, two, there's my first digit number. Number nine, seven, I don't like it. The next number isn't five, it's 51. I can ignore that space, okay? So I don't want that number. The next number is 32. Uh, if I remind myself what my values that matter are, 30, 31 through 40. Okay, so 12 is a yes, 32 is a no, 58 we cross out. 13 is a yes. Four is a yes, 84 is a cross out, 51 is a cross out, 44 is a cross out, 72 is a cross out, 32 is a no, uh, 18 is a yes, 19 is a yes, 40 is a no, I don't know why I put that on there, and uh, zero, zero is a cross out, 30, and so on and so forth. How do I know I've completed a trial? Well, remember, we're selecting four students. So here's student one, two, three, Four. So we put a giant vertical bar to separate the trial. Student one, two, three, vertical bar. Student one, two, three, vertical bar. So there's my completed. I don't need the rest of this because the question didn't ask me for the rest of that. So how many completed it in trial one? Three out of four. Trial two, two out of four. Trial three, three out of four. Based on these trials, the probability of getting two or fewer completed assignments is one out of three. Ta-da! And that's it. So if you need more practice, here's the unit exam. Of course, at this point, you can read through the chapter or you can go through the three assignments, blah, blah, blah. See you in the next video.